How's it going? It's Rocky. I want to share my trading journey for the past two weeks in the year 2024 and these are for the weeks 32 and 33 and there will be three topics that we will be discussing today so feel free to look at the description and jump to the timestamp of the content that you care most about. The first topic is our progress on our self-funded account and then the second topic will be how we're doing on our funded accounts with the funding firms or what most people refer to as prop firm and for our third topic I did a bit of a questionnaire on the YouTube community about a week ago uh, on what I should talk about for my third topic so I value your time so I want to make sure that whatever content I share is something that you find helpful and basically based on the votes it told me to talk about either my best trade of the week or the worst trade of the week so that was a tie, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on my worst trade of the week. Before we get started in our content today, just a quick disclaimer, this is for informational and entertainment purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. Our topic number one is how we're doing on our self-funded account. So what this means is I funded this account with my own money so there's no rules and I can pretty much withdraw at any time I wanted. And essentially this account right now has a total of $1,841.72. It's year to date, it's negative unfortunately, but I'm hoping to get that back to break even sometime in the next month or so. So I wanted to run through and share our progress for the past two weeks. So we'll go in the upper right here and we will look at our statements. And from the statements, we can go look at account balance history and we will look at a specific range. And the range that we'll look at is, we'll start from, since it's the past two weeks, we'll go with August 3rd here. Press OK. And the ending date will be, I'm recording this today, Friday, August 15th. So that one is fine. And we will run through this. And it will show you essentially the beginning cash that we had two weeks ago and our ending cash there. And if you look at our PL for the entire week, they're modest, but they were all positive. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm getting the consistency down. Uh, what I just really need to focus on now is either scaling up as the market allows it or really just allowing my trade idea to mature and be able to hold for a longer profit. So let's bring the calculator up here so we can calculate exactly how we did for the week. And the value that's pretty much important to us is our ending cash. And our ending cash is $1,841.72. So we shall enter that here, $1,841.72. And we will subtract our starting cash. And our starting cash is... $1,530.72 $1,530.72 So our total for this past two weeks for our self-funded account is $311 which I know is not much but what I'm hoping to inspire you with this is the fact that for 10 trading days or one of those days I didn't trade so really 9 trading days I was able to be consistent and profitable for each of those days and the plan is moving forward as the account grows or as the market allows it hopefully we can scale up trade with bigger contracts or be able to hold on to our trades longer so we can have a bigger profit our second topic is how we're doing on our funded account so right now i have two funded account from atf which is apex trader funding and with atf they refer to the funded account as a pa which is a performance account or a paid account so right now we are at day 15 so I'm quite happy with that so essentially you need a minimum 10 days before you are eligible to make a withdrawal from ATF and our profit so far for these two accounts is at $800 and $801 so it's not yet at that threshold where we can make a withdrawal but I'm pretty happy with the progress so my main goal right now is to beat the dynamic drawdown which ATF is infamous for and once we get to that static, hopefully we can trade a lot better as far as the contracts that we have and being able 
to hold our trades a lot longer so if you look at the chart here for the past two weeks you can see that I had one day that I did not trade so this was on Tuesday of this week I was out and I was pretty proud of myself because normally what I'm proud about is that in the past because of the requirement to trade 10 trading days I would force myself to trade on mobile just to satisfy that but for this one I made sure that hey I need to grow up I need to mature and learn from my mistakes and I made sure that I was nowhere close to trading on mobile which I'm quite happy with so this is the zero line as you can see so for the past 15 trading days I've yet to have a negative day and negative days do happen and on that negative day that I know will occur how I treat that day will determine if I will be successful or not but for the past two weeks I was pretty much less than a hundred dollars on most of my profits so this is the hundred dollar line right here and you can see most of my profits were under a hundred and a lot of that was because I traded a lot smaller as I mentioned due to the volatility that occurred after FOMC and a lot of the economic data that came out and then with the CPI and the PPI coming out this week almost a V recovery I just don't do well in super volatile markets which is you know an important part in being a trader know thyself where you know which environment you will succeed in and if it's an environment such as this which I don't do well in I adjusted by by trading smaller so we won't be able to request a withdrawal for this window from the 15th to the 20th of August but I'm hoping by September 1st which is the next window for a withdrawal we'll be at a place that we can finally take a withdrawal so our third topic is essentially my worst trade of the week and the trade I'm showing here occurred today Friday August 16th and it is on the YM and what you can see here is the entry that I made. So I always denote my entry by a vertical blue line. So this is on the time based chart and on the tick based chart, you can see the entry right there. And if you're curious about my trade strategy, which I don't sell, I share it freely from my past videos or you can look in the description. Essentially, I like to enter long when our stochastic RSI is on the overbought side which you can see right here and that's the main reason why I draw the vertical line and then on the MACD which is the moving average convergence and divergence you can see that starting to diverge here and essentially the crossover occurred at this point so that's when I really start looking and something unique that I do and this is just something I wouldn't say I develop but something I've gotten used to the past four years is I like to trade with both a time base on the left here and a tick base chart on the right here so you can see the signs are all there I'm not forcing trades as much anymore I'm trying to limit it at least so the signals there is overbought on the stochastic RSI on the tick base side and then on the bottom here you can also see that starting to diverge a little bit and the crossover really occurred before that so what I was waiting for before entering was waiting for both of these to show the same signals. So that's when I finally entered on this trade. So you can see that's the entry on the tick base and then on the time base, that's the entry. So normally I draw a white line of my entry, but my entry was 40,683. And this yellow line really just denotes of the price that it closed at from the previous day. So I decided that was my entry and as you can see here we were profitable a little bit by about 10 to 20 points which is great so once it hits a 20 points so what occurs is i always have an oco when i'm trading what an oco means it's a bracket so i have about uh, don't do this to scale but I have a limit up here and a stop up here and essentially this bracket or oco it's about 100 points on the top, 100 points on the bottom. And then what happens is this is my way of combating the dynamic drawdown that Apex has. Once I see a little bit of profit, so at this point, I think we were at plus 20 points. What I then do is I move my stop to about plus 10 right here. And based on what's going on also, what I would do is I would bring my limit up here to something closer and I would adjust 
based on what the market is giving me. Unfortunately, for for this trade, uh, you can't see it. Um, I had to have to remove the drawings I just did here, but you can see this candle, big red candle that occurred right there. That pretty much just stopped me out of the trade, and it became a break-even trade essentially with the commissions and fees. It was pretty much a negative. So that's what you're seeing on the time base side. On the tick base side, you'll be able to see it by these two uh, red candles right here. And even though it's a break even trade, which to me is essentially a win, what was painful about this trade is the fact that you can see how much more room I could have made from this. So time base and tick base, you can see that that's at least 150 points or so. Yes there's a chance I wouldn't have gotten that 450 points. I say it's the worst trade because I didn't stick through my trade theory a little bit. I mean, with this candle right here, right? It's just, you never know what will happen. I was protecting myself. Uh, I like to say that you can control how much you lose, but you can't control how much you win. Let me know if you agree with that. But it could have gone both ways. I'm just happy I was able to hit break even. But it was definitely tough to see it progress all the way up and at this time i just i didn't want to force anything right because i feel like i already missed out on it and i didn't want to make any bad decisions so i made sure to step away and look back later when it was a lot clearer so so yeah that's my progress this past two weeks thank you for tuning in i appreciate your time and hopefully on our next video i'll be talking about requesting for a payout Alright, have a good one and I'll see you on the next one.